Hi right, guys, it's Bloodshot here. Welcome back to another video. Something a little different today. Um, in my last video, I told you that I wanted to do some anime content. And this is going to be my first video on that. Where I will be listing my top 10 favorite anime characters ever. So, without further ado, let's crack on. In at number 10, we have Apache from History's Strongest Disciple. He's a master of Mutai. He can never hold back his punches, that's for sure. Because as you can see in the video clip, he likes to overdo his punches and literally kills Kenichi. Uh, it's just a running joke, basically, for a while. He does that in the anime quite constantly, where he'll punch him, ends up killing him, or you see Kenichi's soul leave his body. Despite, anyway, how strong Apache is, uh, he's a huge softy at heart. Uh, the kids love him, the animals love him. Um, however, though, when it comes down to it, he gets serious as the others. He will, you know, literally go from Apache! to fuck off I'm going to kill you um well I have put Apache in at number 10 basically because he has had as long last an effect on myself as an anime fan and it has been many years since watching the anime but I can still remember him he's not really the comedic value, but he's he, he does bring a, a lot of humour and awesomeness to the show. He is a man of very few words as well at times and acts very kid-like. But this is because he doesn't want to seem scary around people, especially kids and animals. In at number 9, it's Kirito from Sword Art Online. He is considered the Black Swordsman in the anime, although not the original Black Swordsman to many anime fans. He is, uh, I believe, a 15-year-old boy who's just bought a, a virtual reality headset, which he plugs in on his head, sorts himself out, and enters a world of Aincrad. In this world, uh, you have the creator who turns off the log button and tells everyone to beat the game or you're trapped in here forever. Kirito, being the main character, has played this game in the beta, and he knows a lot more information, basically, than other players, and then is called a beta, uh, basically a beta player and cheater, because he's keeping it all to himself and not revealing any information to other people. They consider him a cheater. He likes to play by himself, um, until he meets Asuna, who becomes his wife in the game and protects her to the very end, basically. As you can see in this clip, he beats this boss who would have destroyed them all, but he ends up bringing out his second sword and taking on the boss by himself and killing him. In That in itself is pretty much awesome, and to me, he gets a number nine spot. In at number 8 we have Hisoka, he is from Hunter x Hunter. Now the reason I've put him at number 8 is, I've watched Hunter x Hunter for a very long time, uh, different takes on it, the remake, the old version, and he's always been a fan favourite, to be honest, because um, I think a lot of people will agree, he is just pretty much a badass in it. He... He's not really a villain. He wants to become a hunter, but at the same time, he has his evil tendencies about him. And he just stands out from the rest of the characters. He just don't give, don't give a fuck, really. He just, his arm gets chopped off, whatever, sews it back on. You know, but he's got this thing about gone. He just wants him to get stronger and stronger and stronger, so then one day he can kill him. And to me... Hisoka comes across as like a very creepy character, in a sense. Um, but someone you wouldn't want to approach either, and I can get the feeling why Gon gets scared to to approach him or to even fight him. Like the look in his eyes, he's just like, "Fuck, I gotta deal with this pervert." But you know, he's f he's fucking great in the series, and that's why I love him. 
Here you are at number seven. Again, another Hunter X Hunter nominee or input. Um, Killua to me is uh, just seeing him progress from one of these characters that he's had a hard life basically. He's part of the assassination family, the, the Soldak family, and they've put him through torture and all sorts just to make him a better assassin. And as a kid, all he wants to do is do kid things. When he tries to join to get his hunter license, he meets Gon, and seeing Gon. He becomes more kid-like. Does more kiddie things, but then he's still got this darker side to him. Um, Every now and then he lets it out. He he still kills. Still has that assassination mindset about him. And basically the aura he puts out, people get a bit scared of him. He gets down to the battles and he ends up killing... Uh, his opponent um, all because of his brother he's scared of his brother and it's the one thing that he overcomes eventually and you just root for him basically throughout the whole series you know number seven for me if it wasn't for the rest of these characters he probably on my list he probably would be higher and at number six we have Goku and I bet you're thinking what Number six? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, as much as I love Goku, he's just a cliche character that would be on number one on anyone's list, to be honest. But I'm not going to take that away from anyone. Goku is, without a doubt, one of the best characters in anime history. He is the trendsetter for the battle type, for me anyway, for the battle type anime. And... What's not to love about him? Goku is a happy-go-lucky guy from a planet, Vegeta. And basically, he has an arch nemesis, Vegeta, who tries to kill him to begin with, but eventually they become friends, but rivals at the same time. Now, his aim in the anime, surprisingly, is to get stronger. Despite him being one of the strongest characters ever, he there's always someone that's stronger, and he just aims to get b- better, stronger, improve himself. Now, I don't know if you've seen Dragon Ball series, but they got this Super Saiyan thing that, that's going on, and literally, he's now a god. So what's not to love? In number five, Heinz Ulgaon, or Momonga, by his car- um, first character name. He is, without a doubt, the most evil motherfucker to enter a game. Although he still has his nice sides, but his, basically his humanness about him from the real world is disappearing. And this is what I love about this character. He is not the typical human gets trapped in a game or another world and becomes the hero he is setting out to be the overlord basically that's what the animal is called the overlord he wants to rule this new world he is strong as fuck but there's still people that are stronger by the looks of it but he is so strong and this one makes him so good that you just know whoever goes up against him is gonna get fucking snuffed and as much as I hated it, that clip just then before where he's fighting, um, I got his name Stranov or something like that, he he kills him. Uh, but he doesn't want to get revived because even though Eins can revive people, the other guy, out of loyalty to his kin and his country or whatever, he, he had to fight him and he ended up dying. This is another scene which I absolutely loved and it just shows the how powerful he is. This woman can see magic or sense magic of a person. She's like, no, you're weak as tits, basically. And then he goes, oh, sorry. He pulls off a ring and he's like, ha, 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 ha. fuck off. And at four, we have Ryuk. Now, a lot of people probably say, I am mad for thinking for putting him so low down in the list. Like, he could be higher easily. For me, I absolutely love him. 
he, uh, Death Note is probably one of the first animes I watched uh, when I was a, a lot younger. And he's just great. He's just quirky. Um, he's funny in the anime, especially when he starts getting withdrawal symptoms for his apples. So a little bit about the character. Ryuk is a death god or a Shinigami in Japanese. He drops a death note, which light, you can see in this uh, scene right now, he picks up this book that you can literally write someone's name down and within a certain amount of time dies or the person dies who he writes down. Ryuk, being bored in the Shinigami world, decides to drop this book and have some fun on the human world. And boy, does it get fucking good. Like there's a battle between light and L and alongside you got Ryuk who's just having fun. Um there's another version which I thought was done quite well. I've always loved the Japanese version, but the Netflix film that came out, Willem Dafoe did a great job and what can you say about his character other than he's awesome? In a three we have guts. Now, getting down to the serious stuff. In three. Guts or Gutsu from Berserk. Fucking hell, this anime is amazing. This character is amazing. I don't know if you can see, but I have a poster of him as well on my wall. And, well, not a poster, but a picture drawn by the brilliant and talented Wiz Yakuza. Now, this character is what a pinnacle of a, of a human can do. He is so strong. Now, here we have the actual Black Swordsman, who should be titled the Black Swordsman. He carries this massive fuck-off sword on his back, which he can literally hold with one hand every now and then. He mows down countless monsters and people, and he's just... Brute. During the first half, I'd say, of the anime, he is pretty much just against humans, and every now and then, a, a supernatural creature of some sort he takes on. But fuck, when it gets to about halfway, and Griffith does this ritual of some sort, it kills literally all the band of Hawk. Uh, Guts is the only one, and Casca is the only one who to survive. casca has gone a little bit loopy. But Guts is doing his best to protect her. But every night, demons and all sorts come out. And he, he literally, he's fighting 24-7. Whenever he gets a little chance to sleep. Fuck, you know. He's just constant. But you can tell he's just berserk, yeah. Pretty much berserk. He gets this armor that literally enhances him a little bit. If anyone hasn't seen Berserk, I definitely recommend trying to watch uh, the movies that they released, the Golden Ark series. There's three movies. Or if you can get a chance, watch the old anime version because I'm I'm a little bit iffy on the, the new one. The graphics don't seem all that great. Too 3D for my liking. But still, such a great series. Go check it out. And at number two, we have All Might. From the series, Boku no Hero Academia, or My Hero Academy, for those who don't speak Japanese. This guy is absolute beast. You know, anyone would have him on their list, to be honest. He's the king of every single hero. He's always there to save the day. He has American moves, Detroit Smash, for instance. For those of you who have not watched this anime, All Might is basically the top dog or the number one hero uh, in the anime or in this world in the anime. He has this ultimate strength power basically or quirk they like to call him in the anime. He in real life or well, as his normal self he is literally just a skinny dude. But when he uses his quirk, he becomes All Might, this massive person full of muscle and strength. And, you know, he's just, he's just what every hero aspires to be. 
Now, he's taken under this other character who, um, to be honest, is like a little weakling. He has no quirk, or he's quirkless. But what people don't realise with All Might's power, he can transfer it to another person. Um, he gave his powers to Deku, who you'll see in the anime, learning, getting to grasp with the the whole quirk, but All Might, he knows how to fucking do it. There's not many anime out there that, you know, can make me sort of well up, um, you know, full of emotion sort of thing. You know, when it gets a bit down to it, the nitty gritty sort of thing, you realise that he's losing his powers. He's hanging on for all those people who support him and look up to him. And uh, he's got just so little power left, but he just manages to do it. And the emotion behind it is just phenomenal. You know, this guy to me would be number one, but you wait until see the next one. Right, guys, we've reached this point now where we're going to number one. But before that, we have the honorary mentions. You have Vegeta from Dragon Ball, Urza from Fairy Tail, Light from Death Note, and Deku from My Hero Academy. These guys, all in themselves, are worthy of being in a top 10 for anyone. But there's just no room for my top 10. So I just thought, you know, it's best put them in an honorary mention. Because they have every right to be on anyone's top 10. They're all badasses. They're all amazing. You know. So let's get down to number one. In at number one we have Saitama. Saitama otherwise known as One Punch Man. Anyone who has heard of One Punch Man knows that Saitama is literally the ultimate superhero. He is without a doubt... One of the best characters in anime. I know he's not like legit like most of them. He is literally a gag character. Takes out all his enemies within one punch. There is a few exceptions in the anime that do manage to see it way past one. But the majority of them do all die within one. He does hold back against certain people because there are cases where he has hit someone and yet they didn't die. So, we do see a little bit of restraint from him. Saitama is funny in every way, but, you know, he fighting against one of these characters and he realizes that there's a supermarket deal going on and he thought he was going to miss it. Puts up a, a little fuss at the end of the battle and destroys that one monster who thought he had uh, the upper hand. As you can see with um, Saitama as well, he is the ultimate human being by the looks of it. He can beat every f record going and everyone seems to think he's a fake, but only those who's close to him know that he is the real deal. But he's no showboater. He doesn't go around shouting, I am the one who defeated this person or that person. If he sees someone struggling... He'll come in and help, but then he won't take all the glory. He'll let the other person, you know, take it. Saitama is, without a doubt, my ultimate favourite character. Cannot wait for another season. If they do make one, it took four years to make season two. It was a little bit disappointing. I preferred season one, but... The manga I've been reading, and there's so many good things to come. So guys, that's the end of my favourite characters from anime. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, this is my personal list, so I understand if everyone has different opinions. But just leave a comment down below and just let me know your top 10. Let's discuss it. Maybe I've missed someone who should have been in the top 10, but could have been mentioned in the honorary mentions. You know, just let me know. What are, you, what are your thoughts, sir? You know, Winnie. Come say hello. Say, oh, Mike.
your top 10 shape? And I'd be like, yes, I know. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching and peace.